Hi everyone, I hope that you're doing well. In this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about computer programming and problem solving. Specifically, how do we solve problems in the scope of like a computer programming type problem where you're asked to write a program that does something, right? This is probably one of the most important techniques you'll ever learn as a computer programmer. You can know all the syntax in the world, but if you don't know how to solve problems, it's pretty much useless, right? So let's talk a little bit about how we can actually break down and solve a problem. And really it's gonna come with a few different components and a few different pieces to it. So I've got a really simple problem here and it says, have a user input a file name. Delete the file name from the user's computer. Or I guess we should probably say, delete the file with the file name. So we could say, delete the file with the file name from the, com from the user's computer. Now, this seems on the surface, a fairly simple question. And what you want to start with in this type of question is you want to break down into every single piece what you need to do in order to solve this problem. So like step one of this problem is take input from the user. And step two of this problem is delete the file that the user inputted, right? The user input. So that's going to be the idea of the, the two main steps that are related to this problem. Now, what we wanna do now is we wanna think a little bit more in depth about each of these steps. So taking an input from the user is fairly easy. If we're working in a language like Python, we could just use like the input function, for instance. So that's how we would typically do that. Deleting the file that the user inputted is pretty simple too, right? We would just use os.remove, the file name that was input. So there we sort of have a pretty good picture of what we're going to do. If we were looking at a really simple approach of this, the code would look something like this. We would have user in equals input, uh, enter a file name. And then what we would do is we do os.remove user in. So we just delete the file name that was input. And this in a perfect world is going to work exactly as we expected. Now at this point in the problem solving process, we have a program that should work. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to think about everything that could go wrong with your solution. Where could errors occur? What could possibly go wrong? Let's think a little bit about this. So suppose that the user inputted a file name that doesn't exist. What would happen then, right? So what would happen is you would get an error, right? Because the file doesn't exist, Python would try to delete it, it wouldn't be there, Python would throw some sort of error to you. So this is something that we need to consider, right? What if the file doesn't exist? So, you know, when we're taking a look at this, we should sort of write down each of these different things. You know, what if the file doesn't exist? What are we gonna do then, right? What other things could possibly go wrong? Well, the thing that the user inputted might not be a file at all. Maybe they give us the path to a directory, for instance. What would happen in the case where they gave us the path to a directory? What would happen is it would throw an error, right? So we have another situation where we could possibly have an error. What if the file is a directory? Then we're also gonna have an error, right? And now, you know, we continue to think about different things that could happen. I mean, the user could input nothing as a file. That's really the, the file name doesn't exist. They could input in something, you know, completely gibberish. That That's fine. Again, it would be file doesn't exist kind of error. It seems like this probably covers all the possible errors that could happen inside of our code. So this gives us a pretty good coverage. So let's discuss the different methods that we have for solving this. One of the easiest things that we could do is we could do something like this. We could say, try this code here. And then we could say, accept. And then we could print an error occurred, right? Now with this sort of solution, it does technically work, but it's not quite up to the expectations of what you would want for like a really good solution. Ideally, we should be able to really have a message for each of the different exceptions that could possibly happen. Now, how do we do that? Well, what we have to do is we have to catch the exception for each of these different situations. So let's take a look at how we might do that. Now, I don't have these exceptions memorized and that's why the Python documentation exists. It tells us each of the different errors that occur with os.remove. So an is a directory error could be raised if the path is a directory. And then if the file doesn't exist, a file not found error is raised. So you see Python tells us all of that information. So that's really great. So we know exactly what we need to catch in terms of those different exceptions. 
Now, another thing that I don't really know off the top of my head is, well, how do I catch specific exceptions? So maybe we might want to get a refresher on that. So we can just sort of look up that information. And again, the documentation maybe is one of the best places to look for this because they'll give us each of these different pieces. We can accept a specific error, right? We can accept value error, for instance, and then we can accept various different errors as shown here. So let's go back to our code here and you can see that we have the is a directory error. So we could sort of just really copy this, right? So we could copy this and we could say accept is a directory error and we can say file provided is a directory. So that could be the error for us, right? And then what we could do is we could do the same with the file not found error. So we can copy this. This is the exception that we have. And then what we do is we say accept, oh, sorry. And then we can say here, accept file not found error. And then we could just print out, you know, file was not found. And this gives us a much better setup. Now we actually handle each of the errors properly and we give a descriptive error to the user so they understand what went wrong and how they can fix it. Now, the final step to problem solving is to go back one more time and make sure that you covered every single aspect of the problem. So the first part of the problem was have a user input a file name. And we do that right here on this line and then delete the file with the file name from the user's computer, which we do on this line here. And then we catch these different exceptions, which should catch every single case that we're really considering here. And at this point, we have a really nice, robust solution to our problem. So hopefully this helps you understand a bit more about problem solving in programming. Really, it's just a matter of breaking down the problem into manageable pieces, determining the solution for each of those pieces, and then going back and thinking about what could possibly go wrong with each of those different solutions and making sure that you handle each of the things that could possibly go wrong. Now, of course, the, the idea of, you know, finding all the things that could possibly go wrong, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of time. It's going to be something that comes more naturally as you continue to practice programming, as you continue to practice problems like this. I really encourage you to try out a whole bunch of different problems and just see what happens with your problem solving techniques as you continue to try these different problems. You'll find that you just get better and better as you continue on. Programming really isn't a spectator sport. You need to get active with it and try as many problems as possible. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.